Greetings everyone, my name is Lee. I am the founder of Isitango Foundation. Um, at the age of six, seven, I was a victim of abuse myself. Again, when I was a teenager, at 13 years old, I was already standing in court as a witness because my cousin um, confided in me um, to say her father's brother is abusing her. Um, that's how I became a witness. But around the stage, my mind was dented so much to an extent that I believed that perhaps if it happened to me, it happened to my cousin, then perhaps it means that it is okay for a man to just take whatever he wants from a woman. Maybe a woman doesn't have a right to say no to a male person. Um, later in life, I embarked on a journey to find out who is a man in an African context and in, in other religions. I then uh, studied 100 African tribes to find out who is a man um, and many core, other core religions worldwide. One common thread I found between the African tribes and this religion is that manhood has never been a title given to a male person, but rather it is a subject taught to him to posture him into becoming a great man who understands why he has a different masculinity from a woman. It is only there to protect, not to harm. I then packaged what I call the five fundamentals of manhood, uh, which we use a lot in my foundation to program to 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 uh, develop programs um, that speaks about manhood, that um, cause men to think deep about their manhood. Why are we different from women? Are we different from women because we are to oppress them? You know, we are to, you know, take, you know, from them without really hearing whether a woman is okay or she isn't. Um, when you trace uh, back the history of uh, 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 gender-based violence, it never started um, with our mothers. It actually started um, many decades ago. It's something that our grandmothers, great-grandmothers never dealt with. Um, they took the beatings. Now we are experiencing um, violence that started way back, but now it has escalated to a level where a man can just kill a woman and media will just normalize it, you know, that a woman has been killed by her boyfriend. I am saying as a woman today that we cannot continue like this. We need to join forces with the real men who do not abuse. And as women, we need to take a stand to say that we cannot accept this for ourselves and our daughters and our granddaughters. You know, the generations that are to come, we need to fight not only for ourselves but for the generations to come to say that we cannot accept to be the generation of women who are living fearful. We are not safe in a doctor's consultation room. We are not safe. Uh, in a post office, you're not even safe. You hear stories, you know, um, on the mainstream, uh, on the mainstream media, where a child is being sexually abused by her own teacher. I mean, as a parent, we are at work, working, thinking that your child is at school learning things. Whereas that same school could be a place where your child is being abused or molested. We cannot do this anymore as women. We are saying stop gender-based violence and femicide. We are saying that we cannot accept to be victimized and media normalizing uh, the abuse of women and even the killing of women. During the 15 days of activism, my emphasis is that we need to raise males that understand themselves as men, that their masculinity is not for harming, but it is actually for protecting. Stop gender-based violence and femicide.